Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another one of my screencasts where I'll be using R and RStudio to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, the data comes from the Tidy Tuesday project, an amazing weekly project in R from the R for Data Science online learning community. Started a little bit late for the live viewers, uh, but thank, so thanks so much for your patience. And uh, what do you say? Let's get to it. So we're going to be analyzing penguin data. What specifically? Palmer penguins. Or Palmer penguins. Oops. Oops. Uh, I, I linked in, oh, Allison Horst uh, submitted this um, uh, this data set on, oops, I accidentally went to the image. I meant to look at, to go to uh, here. We mean, my computer's a little sluggish. Hmm. All right, I'll see if that keeps up. So, uh, it looks like it's lagging a little bit. No, that's right. One minute, please. Hmm, how is it how is it looking now? Any better? Let me try moving it around a little bit. So I'm getting complaints about it. I think I might be a little bit laggy. Still lagging. Hmm. Give me a minute while I'm debugging this. This hasn't happened that often. It has happened before. One minute, please. That's a slow internet connection. Number of viewers just keeps going up, so clearly this is the secret to a successful screencast. Thanks for everyone for bearing with me. Hmm. One minute, please. I'm trying out this on a different computer. I might be able to move computers and have that work. Can I move computers? Let me see. Can I switch streams? Let 
not sure I can switch screen streams. Let me see. Can people hear, how, how are people, you think it's getting better? It's getting better? All right, I have a suspicion this has to do with the, the I actually had very low uh, battery. So suspicion that could have, be, could have been the reason. Uh, it sounds good, picture is still bad. Um, is what people saying. Wow, I wonder if I can edit this later. That's gonna be uh, fun to watch. Uh, people that, that aren't joining live. How's it looking right now? Uh, let me see. It looks like, oh, it looks to me like, hmm. I'm moving, so I'm, I'm moving around a little bit. There's always a lag. So you get to hear me ask questions while I'm playing around with this. Hmm. Anything? How's the picture? I'm gonna keep talking to see if there's any success. Let's see. Uh, it looks to me like my picture is still frozen on the internet speed test. And that's not good. That's not good at all. Hmm. Can anybody see penguins? Surprised it took this long to have one that uh, that didn't work. It's better, yeah, but is it, um, but a question I have is, is the screen changing? Like right now I'm moving the screen. I'm really wondering if the screen is changing. Oh, then that's, uh, then something's broken. Yep. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna try switching. I tried restarting the screen. How is it looking? Is it, is it, does it look good now? It doesn't? I'm trying to move up and down the screen. How's it looking to everyone else? Uh, for my preview, it looks better. Is it looking better now? Hey, all right. All right, I think we might have, <laughs> have gotten through this, uh, this painful experience together. Uh, fantastic, ah, all right. Looks like it might be fixed. Now I know I always charge my computer beforehand. Uh, okay, thanks for your patience. I'm gonna see if I can edit it later. So, hi, we're, today we're gonna be analyzing the Palmer Penguins data set. So, this data set comes from the Palmer Penguins R package by Dr. Kristen Gorman, Allison Horst, Allison Hill. And, um, yeah, uh, and does it look, so what I'm curious is, is uh, I've had some quality issues so far, so let me know if the screen keeps buffering. Uh, uh, we'll see if, if, uh, if this works at all. Tidy Tuesday, let's find it. Let's, I'm gonna try out the, um, this where I say use tidy template. And I create a new screencast. And I get code. This is RMD code to, um, uh, to go through and actually say to load up tidy Tuesday, tidy Tuesday R theme set, theme light. And then the um, and then download today's Tidy Tuesday data. So far, so good. I'm going to delete the data, the stuff under here. I usually find I don't necessarily need it. Uh, um, uh, all right. So the um, uh, what we can then do is looks like we got we might have gotten through our quality issues, but do tell me if you start seeing a lag again. So. We see two data sets, penguins.csv and penguinsraw.csv. My assumption here is that penguins.csv is a cleaned version of penguinsraw.csv. And the, um, let's see, bundled the raw data and the clean data together. Uh, we're probably just gonna use the clean data today. Uh, so we have penguins. 
344 penguins is what we're taking a look at. All right, uh, looks like there's um, eight observations we have. Let's find out some things about some of them. Let's find out how many species there are. Adelie Gentu Chinstrap, those are species? Oh, that's the pictures that we saw in the Rigi. Chinstrap Gentu Adelie, oh, okay, so these look different. Chinstrap have a black uh, line under their chin, looks like. Uh, Gentu have a mostly black head, and uh, uh, Adeli, um, Looks like maybe you have a smaller beak. I'm not 100% sure. This is a really co cool bit of art that it looks like comes from Alison Horst, who does a lot of art related art. Check out her work. And uh, we can also count the islands. Bisco Dream Torgerson. Uh, let's see what, what it has to say. Island where it's recorded. Um, all right. The uh, Bisco Dream Torgerson. This reminds me a little bit of. Um, of the Charles, Charles Darwin and the finches. We're looking at a couple species across a couple of islands. And then we have some uh, that are bill length and bill depth. Oh, so we may be able to say, um, so we may be able to say uh, to fit a model to predict species based on some other information like the bill length and the bill depth. That could be a cool thing that we do, that we do uh, today is fit a, a model. All right, so we have penguins, we have um, Dora Island. Let's do some Mm, density plots of these four. So, I probably want to look at all four of these. Bill length, bill depth, flipper length, mass, uh, mass G. So what I'm going to do is say, I use uh, gather from the tidier package, but in fact I'm actually going to try using pivot wider, I'm try pivot longer, I'm trying to learn to do it a little bit more, and say the calls we're doing are everything from bill length mm in millimeters to body mass G, and the um, I'm going to gather all those and say, uh, I'm reminding myself what the syntax is. The names too are the um, are going to be the metric and the values to value. So now we have the metric and the value. So I might want to look at these. Um, uh, I might want to take a look at, at the distributions across these. This I generally would do with I could do a histogram. I could do a density plot. These are going to be very different distributions, like body mass G is, is on a very different scale. So I'm actually going to be doing a um, histogram on a scale, uh, on a facet wrap by metric. This is drift one, and uh, scales equals free, free x. Oops. So now I have four distributions. One thing I notice is that they're they're generally multimodal. So we have like um, here we go. We have like bill depth, bill length, uh, bill bill length. I wonder in a histogram, can I say, can I reduce the number of bins? I can't set a bin width because it's different in each facet. But can I say bins are twenty? Yes, I can. Great. I said ten, but twenty. Okay, that looks a little more organized. All right, now we see our bill depth, bill length, body mass, flipper length. Uh, and I'm noticing they're multimodal, which makes sense because we have multiple uh, spe species here. So something I can do here is fill, is fill it in with the species. Aha, now I can see like, oh, the bill depth is, is a good way to distinguish the, uh, the gentoo from the Adelie and the chin strap, but not the chin strap and Adelie from each other. Uh, similarly, we can see bill length separates the Adelie out, the body mass, uh, wow, this is really cool. We see a, um, uh, these four uh, species and their different distributions. Uh, all right, then um, uh, there's actually a couple other ways we could visualize this. So I'm actually gonna call this pivoted, penguins pivoted. And I'm going to do I'm going to do the same visualization, but I'm going to do um, here we go fill species. I'm going to do a density plot. What is useful about a density plot is that we have fewer chin straps than the other ones, and that uh, but a density plot will put them kind of on all on the same uh, axis. So I'll say fill species by metric. Okay, uh, and uh, this. 
didn't work because, oh, I need scales free, the density is going to be different in this one because the scales are different. I can also throw make this an a um, density of 0.5. There, that looks pretty cool. Now that we know that they're roughly normally distributed, not within each species, not exactly normally distributed, there's actually another kind of visualization we can make, which is we put the species on the x-axis and the value on the y-axis and make it a geom box plot. Uh, I do not need this and I do not need fill. I leave in the metric and scales free y, I don't need free x. Check this out. Okay. So what we're looking at here is, um, is three things, a geom histogram, geom density, geom box plot. Uh, and the, um, what we see then is the distribution. Uh, all right, so we can predict species based on these two others. So this is really cool. One thing is um, uh, I think that um, this was created by, I think, Allison Hill as an alternative to the IRIS data set, which is both overused and, uh, and was introduced by Fisher, who has a... Uh, hist uh, um, R.A. Fisher has a history as a eugenicist. Um, and the, um, so this is actually, a, a, and that is a, uh, a data set famous for using four values to predict three uh, categorical species. It's a classic kind of um, introductory machine learning problem. So this is, um, is looking at, is, yeah, we're seeing like, like we really can identify a species based on these four pieces of information. And we notice each gives a different piece of information. Uh, the build depth, mm, and flipper length really distinguish Gentoo, and Adelie and uh, build length and body mass really distinguish. Sorry, I uh, take that back. And build length mm really distinguishes Adelie. Gentoo looks like it's going to be easy to distinguish. The uh, it's going to be harder, and then. Yes, we can distinguish Adelaide and Chinstrap. Okay, so we might end up doing some like decision trees and things like this uh, to fit models for predicting the penguin species. Uh, but this is a really useful int introductory like um, exploratory data analysis for it. Uh, all right, so we're using those three values. Uh, could we use anything else to predict um, uh, to predict the species? Let's think about that a second. One issue is that some of these are going to be um, see about this. Some of these are going to be like, uh, oh, I'm very sort of regular penguins, uh, are based on the island, uh, and some are based on the year. So I might be curious, for example, I just want to know, like, is there a difference uh, over time, for example, or, um, or, or uh, the sex of the penguins? And we could start by saying year, uh, let's see, year, I can actually do a bar plot, not a not a, um, a, call, a geom call to say fill equals species and ask how do they differ. Not tremendously based on year. I think that's pretty useful. And then I can also say like, oh, that's a good, good sign. I didn't want to really include too much for year here. And then I can say island. All right, so island was ex is extremely associated with, um, with the species. What do I see here? I see that if you, that Adelie are find, found on all three, but Gentoo are found only on Bisco and Chinstrap are found only on Dream. I'm actually not going to use Island in the predictive uh, model. I think it would make the problem too easy. Uh, Bisco is clear. Would anything on uh, Bisco can't Bisco can't be uh, um, Chinstrap similar for Dream, and then uh, Torgerson can't be Adelaide. Uh, we could add that later, but it would be, I think, too informative. With, we'll, for this problem, we'll pretend we found the penguins just in a, um, in a, a data, in like a, uh, what's the word, a, um, in like a general pool. Okay, so this is where I use it, where, where we want to actually start fitting some models. So I want to say models to predict species. This is where I admit that I, I'm relatively... I'm relatively new to the tidy models universe. Julia Silge is going to be introducing, uh, I'm guessing going to make a screencast out of this data set, and she's one of the, main, uh, one of the core maintainers of tidy models at our studio. Uh, so she's going to do a much better job than I am. I want to make that, that clear up front. For me, what might you learn? Eh, you might learn how to learn how to use something that someone hasn't used a lot before. But I'd like to learn, so I'm actually going to do today, uh, I'm going to use a tidy models package today to try fitting these models. All right, so the um, so what we want to do is predict species uh, based on other on other um, 
column, uh, on other like columns here. So what I end up, what I do on a, um, I'm reminding myself, it's been actually, it's been a little bit of time. What I want to do is create a recipe for um, any pre, I'm remembering, reminding myself now very quickly. Yes, the um, first thing we do is split into training and testing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use, um, uh, wow, well, I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering how to do a, uh, a lot of these things. Uh, initial split, yep, and then from the R sample we say initial split into three quarters uh, training and testing on penguins. Uh, splits them into training and testing. I'm going to actually set a seed first and say 2020 and then split. Uh, initial split penguins into uh, training and testing data. How do I get these out? I do training and split. And I get out the training data. Later, I can get the testing data. So I can say training data looks like this. All right. I don't actually think I might not need a recipe on this data. I might just want to use a parsnip to fit uh, the model. I'm going to quickly remind myself how fit works. <laughs> yes, I think yes. I think I'm remembering now myself, the way that I'm going to do this is linear regression. Yes, I'm going to create a spec. Yes, I just uh, find myself remembering things. I'm going to be creating a linear model uh, to start with. And I'll say mode is not regression, but in fact classification. So this is a oops, mode should be, oh, nope, it's not, uh, it's logistic red. And I think the default for logistic red is classification. Great. So I'll be fitting a logistic model. To classify among our three um, our three species, Adelaide, um, uh, Chinstrap, and Gento. This is me going to the documentation a lot, so we'll see how how I do uh, today. Uh, and all right, it's we're fitting a generalized linear model, uh, and we do we fit the uh, what we start with is set engine. By default, it'll be the G. Uh, it'll be we can use GLM. We could also be doing some um, uh, what's the word. Uh, regularization on it as well. All right, so the, um, so if I take, uh, I say I set the engine being a uh, GLM, I actually also want, to, I now want to fit it, and I reminded myself for a moment how that works. Parsnip fit. There's, uh, I just taking my time on this one. On a model spec, there it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it to say the thing that I fit is species explained by. Um, let's start with just one. Say explained by uh, bill length mm, and we put it on the data training data. Outcome should be a factor. So one thing I learned from this is that we want to say I'm gonna do penguins. Mutate species equals factor of species. And then initial split, I'm going to split the data up here. I could have made that a, um, a recipe. I'm not going to bother doing that. There's not a lot of pre-processing here. Uh, so but this, is, this is the way that we fit a linear model. I think if I drop the set engine, it still does a, um, uh, it still will fit a logistic regression. But the, um, here we go. Yeah. But now what I'm fitting is I say, uh, uh, I'm actually, yeah, so I'm, I'm fitting a model that is now a GLM, and I end up with coefficients, and I say, okay, there's a relationship between these, let's see, class, this is a classification, where's my, how does this work, I'm actually curious, if I take, uh, so here's the model, I should have three types of species here, and uh, model fit, huh. I actually don't understand how, if I use like broom tidy, I would have expected this to fit a classification model because species is a factor. Uh, so I would have expected it to do, hmm. I would have expected to say mode is classification. I don't actually understand why it's giving me a numeric uh, response. Let's see. Um, all right, uh, okay. The uh, I'm still wow I'm still learning my way uh, learning my way through here. 
Uh, hmm. I really don't understand why. So I'm actually one thing I do when I don't understand how something's working is I put it through the um, lending club library model data. I put it through the example. So in this case, there's a model data set, and I want to say, okay, what does this look like if I run through here? Does it ha end up with, um, here we go. Uh, do, do, I, do I get a reasonable uh, response? This is me fitting. I just really expected, hmm, I really expected the output to be predicting on these, uh, on like the species. So I'm actually a little bit confused about that. All right. Let's see what let's see what uh what we that is to do like multiple class multi class regression. All right. We'll find out what uh we'll you will you'll learn with me uh what how this this works. All right. Let's see. Yeah. This is um. So we have a question of should the response variable for logistic regression be two levels? I thought that if it's a factor, it would actually like do multi class regression. Uh. So. Is there multi-class? This is classification. I'm looking through here quickly to understand, like, we have three classes. Why are we not, uh, why is it not fitting on multiple? Uh, so then, then I did this, um, this look at the lending data, lending club data, count class. Uh, there's only two classes in this one. Hmm. It only supports two classes. So here's a question I have for the group. Does, um, does Parsnip support multi-class regression? I haven't tried it, which is, um, hmm. All right. Well, Here's what I'm going to do. I think you can only, uh, I don't think that it converted factor to numeric because it expected a factor for classification. I suspect that it uh, collapsed some levels uh, here. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to FCT lump. I'm going to lump two species into one. I'm going to say predict whether something is Adelie, for example. Uh, so I'll say combine chin strap. And uh, so what I'll say is chin strap Gentu is both chin strap and Gentu actually it occurs to me. I can that was the FCT recode, but I can FCT lump species to be only uh, one non other level, and it'll do it for me for free. Now it's Adelie and other. All right, uh, so then what I, what I can do is say, um, all right, uh, some, uh, then I get the model, all right, and um, yeah, now I think it might, it looks like it's, that's what it already did, basically, is it divided Adelie and the other two, Adelie being the base level of the factor. Okay, so this is the, um, this was me looking at multi at, uh, at uh, logistic regression for predicting um, a, um, uh, model. Okay, so the next, yeah, the next step, man, I am just learning. I am rusty on my tidy models. Gosh. All right. Uh, the next step is going to be, um, yes, that we, uh, that we actually collect the metric, that we actually measure the, the metrics, the model. So predict on model, remember myself now, how do I predict the results of the model on, um, to model, What I can do is try saying, uh, what is the in, uh, new data is the split. Uh, is, sorry, is part of me, the testing of split. Uh, so then, does augment work on these? That would be nice. Hmm, it doesn't. Uh, so the story is that we can say, uh, we can actually, we can get metrics out of this. What we want to do is say, remind myself quickly, this is prediction. There's something I think about is we might want augment. Uh, 
and say testing of split, bind rows with testing of split. I said bind rows, but I actually meant bind columns. And uh, now I can actually, as, all right, so now I see pred class and species. I can actually get the confusion matrix by saying, this is just based on build length and I'm nothing else. And now I say I join with the testing data and I count the cred class and the species. Uh, and we, this is what's called the confusion matrix. We see that there were six examples of being wrong. And generally we have, uh, wow, this is very accurate actually, that, 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 our act, that most of the time we predicted the correct class just based on the, on the, the, the bill length. Uh, so this model of, of species by bill length and, um, uh, got to a, um, a pretty high accuracy on our, on our test data. Uh, so that was one um, step, but actually counting is not to get a confusion matrix isn't the only way to measure this. We can use Yardstick. Yardstick can compute metrics. I'm now remembering my, myself. We do, I think we say metric set. And I remind myself how that works. Nope, it's not metric set, it's metrics. Yep. What we want to say is, um, first we say, what is the truth? The truth is the species uh, class. What are we pr providing? We're doing dot, dot pred underscore class. And then, uh, let's see. And now we get back from that both our accuracy and our, K -A, uh, our KAP. Anyone know what KAP stands for? This is what I'm, I'm not uh, familiar with. Um, but the, uh, let's see, I see, it's class metrics. Nope, oh, well, we don't have to do that because it's, um, it's, it's, it's where it's built in. All right, so when I gave it two factors, it said, okay, here's the accuracy, here's the cap, what is that? So we can actually check, it is a metric. We can say it's similar measure to accuracy, but is normalized by the accuracy that we expected by chance alone. Oh, that sound, that's really helpful. Uh, kappa, it's called. I wonder why they shortened it to cap. Hmm. So kappa is a metric, is a measure for accuracy, normalized by the accuracy that we expected by chance alone. Uh, all right, so the idea then is that we have, this is a kind of our, our, what we get from just bill length, is, um, point, is like 93% uh, accuracy and uh, point, uh, 0.859. All right. So one thing, yeah, we have train, test, and we have holdout data. No, we don't have holdout data on this one. Uh, okay, I'm thinking for a second about how we're gonna go through this. Yes, generally you want to get, you wanna do cross-validation and you only wanna test your accuracy at the, as the very last step. So I was cheating a little bit here. What we wanna do actually first is break this down into, um, into groups. So in, into um, this training data, we want it split into, uh, here we go, training data. We want this to be our sample. Uh, we want this to be split down into, I remind myself quickly what it is. I think it's V fold CV. There we go. Into 10 splits. So what this does is say, okay, here's our splits, here's our, um, here's our ID, and we, um, and this is actually divided the data down into ten into tenfold cross validation. Uh, so the um, so we have and within each we have a training uh, set and a test set in each fold. The here we go. We call these our splits. Can we say data equals splits? No. Can we say some ah? Uh, we can say fit resamples. That's the name of the function. I remember this now. What we'd say is we take our uh, here we go, we take our object and we say resamples equals splits. A little slower than I expected, but here, ah, now yes. Now we have actually, um, this is really neat, it actually did our, um, our metric calculation for us. So we, we have our splits, we have our ID, we end up, now we have our metrics. Um, and if I take this and I pass this, mo I call it models. If I take this and I pass this to collect metrics, this what happens? Yes, it finds the overall accuracy 
And the um, uh, does ROC, interesting to me that it does ROCAUC and not Kappa. Huh, can I get the, the Kappa out? Let's check. Collect metrics. Uh, to do that, I would need to tell fit resamples which metrics I want. So I think a metric set. All right, so what I think I can do is actually say metrics equals metric set. Uh, let me do this cap, uh, I probably want accuracy. These are uh, cap and RUCAUC. Can I do this? Maybe let's find out. That looks great. Uh, so what we end up with then is like three accuracy metrics. And what's really cool is we can actually uh, visualize those right away. I can say something like uh, show the mean by the dot metric, geom point, geom error bar h, aes x min is uh, mean minus two, two times standard error, and uh, x max is mean plus two times standard error. Oops, uh -huh. mm, did I, oh, standard error, there it is. Yeah, so this is like our accuracy metrics. Uh, so act cross-validated, cross-validated accuracy metrics. Cool. So one, so this is just for like the simplest linear model we can do. We get some things in terms of like our accuracy of distinguishing uh, Adelaide from all, uh, was it called Adelaide? What was it called? It was called, uh, Adelaide from um, Adelie from all the others. So we see is the AUC is high, the accuracy is a little is pretty high, the kappa that's accuracy adjusted for a random chance. Even that is like is um pretty good. All right, so this is like how we how we can calculate cross validation and um uh, cross validated metrics uh, out of a tra out of training data. Later we in a moment we're gonna, later we're going to get back to the uh, the holdout set. I'm actually going to leave that uh, leave that out of here for now. Okay, so that's logistic regression. Um, the but that, that's only with one term. Uh, what can we get if we get multiple terms? Here's where I'm really curious about something, which is uh, let's see. I'm really curious. Can we get? Uh, can we compare a couple of different models? I know how to fit a second model, uh, so I'm actually going to call this linear logistic model. And I'm going to also have one called logistic model extended, where I'm going to try one where we actually have a couple of, of different. Uh, models for it. What I'm really curious about here is I can use tune to have multiple, but can I see what I really want to do is fit resamples on multiple models. Then I really want to like a multiple different formulae. Is that a thing we, we can do? Uh, a parsnip model traditional model formula or a recipe. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's a thing we can do. So the, um, so I'm, the, that's what I'd like to do is I'd like to compare uh, these metrics versus these metrics. Um, uh, oh, I uh, have some other screen. Pass on. So something that I'm doing here, uh, so then what I'm doing here is actually notice I'm focusing entirely on our, our metrics for accuracy for classifying these penguins. I'm not focused at all on interpreting the linear model. Uh, so that, I have a lot of screencasts to interpret the linear model. I want to try this one, doing tidy models and actually doing some machine learning. Uh, to like compare models and try comparing their accuracy. Uh, so this was, was um, what I'm trying out for today. Uh, all right, but I'm, now I'm gonna try a, sec, a second model. One is, what I'm going to do is look at our training data, where I enough split it into ten folds, uh, where I say, let me see, I'm going to do one where I also include the build depth and the flipper length, 
what is it, flipper land, call names, flipper land mm, what I'm doing is fitting the same thing, I'm doing something very similar but with a couple of extra um, variables, so this is also a GLM but it uses multiple um, uh, fits, ooh that's uh, interesting, I think we might be overfitting a little bit here, Hmm. Here, so logistic model extended is this. What happens if I collect metrics on it? What are my metrics on this model? Higher. Uh, hmm. Then I'm not sure we are overfitting because I think we might just be really, really, it might just be really, really good at distinguishing these. Uh, so I'm, so I'm actually going to, what I'm going to do is say, hmm. I'm going to say collect metrics on this mutate model is logistic bill length that's like one level and I'm going to bind rows I again I'd love for if this there were a way to do this built into tidy models I just haven't found it yet so here's the what I'm doing instead I'm creating a data set that is our metrics within each model I'm going to say logistic uh, logistic bill length, uh, logistic for predictors, and I'm going to say on logistic model extended, I'm going to add a couple new lines. So what I just did is combine our metrics together so that we can compare across them. Uh, I can then say, all right, I want mean metric color equals model. Check that out. Uh, what we now have is like is a model comparison framework. We uh, we can say okay, uh, using logistic for predictors, uh, your ROC is pretty your AUC is similar, but your accuracy and your adjusted accuracy are both higher. Uh, so the um, uh, so yeah, this is pretty this is pretty interesting. Is the um, uh, we have um, is is that, that yeah it does so like for predictors does do better. Um, that's like really pretty high. Ignore the fact the accuracy goes over zero, that's because we're using standard error. Uh, so it is, our accuracy is improved by using all four predictors. All right, that's just comparing to linear logistic model extended. But the fun thing is we can try, uh, this is what's, this, you might say, uh, why didn't I use LM, or more precisely GLM? Why did I go about doing tidy models? Uh, what's the advantage of it? So the first, um, uh, the first issue, ooh, somebody tells me is that I can do multi-class regression with multi -nomic reg. Definitely coming back to that. That's really cool. So the um, uh, the first thing is that that uh, that I was able to do this training this train test split really easily. I'm training ten models on every one of these and then testing on the on the data that was held out. So I get to collect these metrics really uh, really well. Uh, that's the first reason. But the other, um, really easily. But the other reason it's, it's useful is that I can switch out the model that I'm using really easily. For example, I can use k, uh, k nearest neighbor. So let's see, part, what is it? Parse snip nearest neighbor. There it is. I'll say nearest neighbor uh, mode equals classification. And uh, I actually say, try something. Uh, I'm going to start by pretending we know how many neighbors. So I'm going to say create a nearest neighbor with 10 neighbor, uh, with ten neighbors. What does nearest neighbor do? I've never actually done it before on this screencast. I've done it before in life, but not on the screencast. And actually not with, um, uh, not with uh, tidy models. Uh, nearest neighbor finds the 10 that are closest in these predictors, uh, the 10... Um, uh, the 10 uh, penguins that are closest in the data, and it uses them to, uh, to predict what the next, what the penguin is. It's probably overkill in this data, but it's nice how we can, um, we can do this comparison. So the, um, one sec. Yeah. Uh, so the, um, uh, so this is nearest neighbor, uh, and what I, what I then do is, uh, is say nearest neighbor mode classification I'm going to start by saying neighbors 10. Later, we're going to try tuning it. And uh, NN models, uh, NN is nearest neighbor. There we go. Nope. Let's see. What am I missing? I might, do I need to set an engine? 
maybe. Oh, KK man. Hmm, looks like I do need to set an engine. I thought if it was a default that it would just work. Huh. All right, and I have a problem with the data. Problem with mutate input dot row. Problem with mutate input dot row. Huh. In full date, I have a suspicion about this. I think I decided to do it with the splits being too small. Uh, I'm going to be, uh, and one of the folds failed. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit uh, and say so. I don't know. I don't. I don't know exactly what happened. And split the data only five ways. Oop. Nope. Not repeats. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, what I want to do is say um, v. The number of splits is five. And I'll redo my other two models that way. No good. It's not. Uh, it's not working. Oh, but um. Oh, but the other ones worked. Okay. Well, uh, so this is actually something interesting is that it tells me which of them failed, but it also tries running on the other ones. I'm gonna go back to our ten-way split. Yeah. I'm gonna go back to our ten-way split. Maybe only one of them failed there. Oh boy, man. This is just just a what an adventure today. You know, but if I don't step outside my comfort zone. I'm not learning, and I am learning a lot today. I hope you are too. But it might just be me, and I'm, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, we had two of the models fail, but it looks like the rest of them did get metrics. Uh, they get, and the fun thing is they get notes. Here we go. Yep. So when things fail, we could do. Um, we could. We, we end up with uh, notes. And um, what I'm going to do is throw this into the mod into the comparison. Uh, where is my green? Where is my green? Where is my logistic four predictors? Does it overlap? Can oh I know what happened. Anyone else know what happened? What happened is I neglected to chain copy paste error. See that I reuse the same uh, the same metrics. Oops. All right. Oh, this is so cool. Uh, okay. What is cool? The cool thing is that uh, here we go. That we can rank these models. It looks like logistic was the worst of them. Uh, logistic with four predictors was better. And then KNN with 10 neighbors performed the best out of all of those. So um, I actually didn't expect this. I suspected that KNN would be overkill, but it does look like K nearest neighbors uh, what did have a higher cross validated accuracy uh, on the train on the, the uh, within this um, this initial training set. Uh, so that's really neat, actually. Um, so it's like it looks like it had a hundred percent AUC, and then quite close to 100% like um, uh, K K kappa and accuracy. Uh, the standard error is um, going over one is just because standard error does, doesn't represent metrics well at like, at like this level. The general idea here, maybe I can skip the standard error. I can skip the standard and just try it like, let's see, do a geom point. I can just do geom points or I can do geom call. But those will, will all look very close to each other. Yeah, this is a reasonable way to, to look at these um, uh, metrics. But then I just add in like accuracy, a value, metric, plus or minus. Actually, I'm going to use standard error rather than two times standard error. Two times standard error is like a 95% confidence interval, but this has meaning too. It's more like a 68% confidence bound. It might just uh, look a little less silly in terms of going over one. Ah, yeah, that does look a lot, lot less silly. Um, okay, I'm going to stick with that. Uh, it just doesn't go over one. Uh, okay, so the um, plus or minus standard error, and these are our three metrics. I don't need this cross value out, uh, across models. All right. So this looks. This was our, our way of comparing models using the. Um, so just to review, what we did is we fit models using the. Um, 
let's see, I can actually say, I can, I can, re, I can refactor this a little bit. Metrics are these. Uh, I'll just call it met so that it doesn't overlap any of those. And uh, logistic spec is, th is this. So I can repeat. Here we go. I get our metrics. I get a logistic spec. I fit a logistic model. I fit a logistic model with four predictors. I get a nearest neighbor model. This feels slow to me for just fitting on a, on a fairly small data set, but hmm, interesting. All right, and uh, yeah, so I've done, I, re I just re wanted to rerun all that a little bit, uh, get our metrics. Now, I have a question, which is a hundred, that. For, our, for AUC, we got 100% accuracy on identifying species. Well, how do we, uh, pardon me, 100% AUC. The question was, are we sure we're not doing training and prediction on the same set? Uh, that's, a, yeah, so, so the answer is, uh, the answer is first, generally that what Fit Samples is designed to do is to calculate metrics on training, the training data sets on, um, uh, so it, it calculates metrics um, on the training data sets across each of these splits. So the, um, one sec, looking. At least I sure hope that's what it's doing. Uh, but the, um, one sec. I'm actually check, checking really quickly. But I have a way I can check that, which is we have a holdout set here uh, that we haven't been doing anything on. Um, and, um, ah, yes, so the story is that it stores the out-of-sample estimates of the metrics. Uh, so you can actually see that it, it, these splits, so the, the answer first is in terms of doc, uh, of like our, what the function is doing, yes, fit resamples is saving out-of-sample estimates of metrics. Uh, so it's, it's designed to fit on the training values within each of these models, these uh, splits. It, it, it trains on the 232, evaluates on the 26 uh, for each of these. Now, a reasonable question is, what if there's a bug? How do we know this is working well? Uh, here's the, one thing I can do is jump to the holdout set, uh, our testing data. So we have this testing on um, this testing of our splits, of our sorry, of our initial split, Oop. and I called it split. This is data that never popped up in our training data. Uh, it was 86 values. We did, we did use it a little bit earlier, but it's um, it's not in any of our training data. It has nothing to do with the data that we fit uh, the KN model on. So what I can actually do is is take this and do prediction. So I'll say um, take this and predict uh, our NN model, our nearest neighbor model, uh, with the new data is. Uh, dot being this uh, one that comes in. Oops, testing split. Oh, um, I didn't train the model. So, uh, and then trained, I actually need to fit not with the resamples because resampling is good for choosing a model, but I need to actually say fit um, all of these data equals training split. So this is our train data. And I can now also uh, do take this and train here. Yeah, so uh, a question from, uh, is um, can we use predict on these models? The answer is yes. It returns a table like this. Uh, something that I'd love is if we could use augment because then I wouldn't have to do this step that I'm about to do where I say bind columns uh, to testing split. I'm going to give it 
I don't give that feedback to the, the model, the tiny models package. Uh, but the story is that we have predicted class and we have species. And now I can ask count pred class species. And the answer is we got two, uh, in our holdout set, we did get two of them wrong. Our accuracy was 90 something percent. Uh, but but that's actually not answering the question of what about our what about our, um, AU, our ROC AUC? I can actually do uh, class metrics truth is dot species dot cred class. Oops, metrics. What was it called? Cla I think we just do metrics. Hmm. Oh, I actually have a metric set I call, nope, I have a metric set I call met, uh, in this inaccuracy, oh right, uh, mm. I'm reminding myself quickly how this works, because I want to actually compute all three of these, and uh, metrics, class metrics are this and this metric set. Uh, oh, I need to say uh, estimate equals this. Ah, cool, okay. Oh, mo wait. No valid variables. Huh. I don't have an explanation on this one. Uh, this I thought this would just work. Um, but, uh, oh well. I'm still getting the accuracy out. Uh, but I'm not getting the AUC, and that's the thing I really wanted. Does somebody know what... Um, so we know what I'm doing here, why it's think, saying, um, I wonder if it has something to do with the, uh, the pipe operators, just to check that it doesn't. I'm going to try this, um, and now use met. That's not the problem. In metric ROC, AUC, no valid variables provided. So um, let's see, estimate class equals species, estimate equals this. No, truth equals species, estimate is this. Not working. Uh, something's up here. Species and pred class. Met was defined up here where I said, like, I can call it my metrics. My metrics. My metrics. Uh, and here I say, yeah, so metrics is a metric set of accuracy. Cap and ROC AUC. Oh, I know what the problem is. Uh, yeah, the problem is that we that we actually want the outcome to be not um uh, to be not just a predicted value, but a uh, here we go predicted um, class. I know the problem is we actually have a probability here. So we say predict model fit, uh, and uh, the way that that works is type is numeric for example. Yeah, the problem is that our ROC is, the, is based on, um, uh, here we go, it's like a predict and untrained new, so, so the story is this, like if I have, uh, yeah, the, the story, the lesson goes like this, this is a predicted class. This, where I do predict type equals numeric, not numeric, probability, that's the one. Gets me the probability of pred adelie, adelie and pred uh, uh, probability of other. Um, and then if I bind the bind calls of those two together, it'd be cool if you could get multiple in a row. That's gonna be maybe something that can fit into augment. Uh, yeah, I've got a really recommendation here about augment on these, model, on these models. Uh, that's gonna be and I wonder if they'll, they'll find that interesting, useful feedback. Uh, testing split. Uh, yeah, so here what I'm doing is I'm saying predicted class and then the predicted Adelie and predicted other. Uh, okay, and then here we go. I, what I say is predictions and then I say species and pred class Estimate equals dot pred Adelie, I think is the way we do it. Nope. Nope, D dot pred Adelie. Oh, I need to save this. I really thought I had it that time. Uh, estimate should be a factor. All right. The answer is that I'm not able to get both the uh, ROC and the, um, 
Uh, I'm not able to get both these at the same time. So the, here we go, type is prod. Uh, the problem is that, yeah, I can't get, I don't know how I, how I can get both the, um, uh, oh, uh, my metrics. Nope. Right. I don't know how I can get, uh, both the, like, numeric and the, yeah, this is the issue is I, th I can get one but not the other is like I, ca I can get accuracy or I can get ROCAUC. Uh, I don't know how to get around that. I know I can do um, ROCAUC. When I said I know, I was wildly overestimating. Wow, this is exciting. This is a... Uh, what a bug, what, not a bug, eh? what a, what a, what a wall I'm hitting here. I really thought that I could compute species explained by these. Uh, this is, yeah, this is, um, I'm thinking about this real quickly. Yeah, the, um, the story is that I want to do the metric set and get out prediction species. Um, I thought that I could take ROCAUC and then... Ah, okay. It worked. Uh, it didn't look like it worked, but it did. Uh, the story is that here's our accuracy, our cross-validated um, uh, kappa and accuracy. And it, oops. Uh-huh. And here's our, our, uh, our, our RC, AUC. It looks like you can't do them at the same time. So... The story is that, uh, but yeah, this is an answer to the question of what is our holdout accuracy on the nearest neighbor model? And the answer is that it's 100%. Uh, there, this is an AUC of 100%. Um, the, another way I can confirm, the, what does an AUC of 100% mean? It means that if I take my predictions, which remember, this is on a completely held out set, separate from what we were training before, uh, and I visualize the species, the actual true species, with um, uh, uh, with dot tread Adelaide as a box plot, the answer is take a look at this. Uh, there are two that we miscat classify that we think have a higher chance of being Adelaide than being um, uh, than being other, even though they're actually other. There are two we mis we we miscategorize, but those two still have lower values than any Adelie um, penguins. That's why our accuracy isn't one hundred percent, but our AUC is one hundred percent. We just basically it, it it gets all of them right in terms of order, but it gets the threshold just a little bit wrong. Uh, so this is uh, interesting. Uh, all right, um, all right. So that was. Um, uh, there's a good qu oh yes so someone has a good question uh, this is um uh, someone has a good question which is how was I able to get all the metrics within each of these models of fit resamples I think the answer is that I'm not a hundred percent on this but I think basically that uh logist that fit resamples does the logic of figuring out which value each of these metrics needs uh, be like and that's I think I think something that I just don't know how I would go about getting, uh, so it's like, are you see, um, I guess like a, tr they all need a truth, but sometimes one of these needs a, um, uh, class probability, uh, and, uh, I don't know about like accuracy, which, what does this need? It always needs estimate. Um, yeah, but I don't think I can actually do like, yeah, I don't think I can get one, but not the other. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't, so I don't know how, how to get both, all of these at the same time, but I did get them here. It's a good question. This is like something for to investigate. Uh, either I can try and fix it, or I can um, uh, I, I either I can try and like fix it, or fix how I approach it, or I can uh, give some submit some feedback to tidy models. Okay. So what we found here is that logistic regression works really well at predicting the um. So this is cross validated. Uh, we could do this on the the holdout set too. Uh, logistic regression 
works really well on um, each of the on each of these, but 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 best uh, especially when we compare multiple predictors. But Canon has really uh, exceptional accuracy, which remember is not shocking because we looked at this box plot and consider like just how much information there is of Adelie versus the others. Uh, bill length is really predictive, but then we can also use uh, these to split out um, like this, this, and this to split split them out from like this one to split out from Gen 2, uh, build depth to Gen 2, and, and uh, body mass as well to split out from Gen 2. Um, yeah, it's actually, so it looks like it's pretty informative. All right, so the, um, I saw the question that, that we, this box plot, we don't expect AUC1. I think the thing to think about there is that it's actually fitting a decision tree. Uh, so it is able to, so I'm curious how a decision tree would do. Uh, I'm, I'm over time from what we generally expected, it, but we did start late because of the internet issues, so I'm going to go a little bit longer. I actually say, what would a decision tree look like? DTB decision tree, mode is classification, uh, and um, I'm not going to add anything with the neighbors. I'm going to say, let's see, I'm going to say, what are the engines for decision tree? Uh, set engine uh, R part, sure. Uh, and then uh, fit resamples on the decision tree. Uh, so what I'll say is use all four of these, grab all the metrics. There's a better way to do this that I just thought of, but I'll do it. I'll, I'll skip it. It's not that much better. Um, and the, um, oops, here we go, here we go. I'm missing a parenthesis. I'm missing a comma. All right, so what this turns out is the decision tree does relatively poorly. Uh, so the decision tree relative to, say, Canon. Uh, decision tree does lower... AUC, which actually makes sense to me because decision tree has fewer like, uh, like kind of degrees of freedom. Decision tree and then kappa and then, ac uh, then accuracy. And we can actually try looking at the decision tree. Uh, what would a decision tree on one, on the, uh, on, what, 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 what would one of them look like? How can we actually grab out one of these models? Uh, the answer is actually we can, I'm by myself now. There's a function for that, which I'll remember is control resamples, extract, yep. Control resamples, extract, okay. What I can do is say, is say this, extract equals true. Oh, extract equals no, function. What I can say is I want to keep the models that I'm fitting. I think I actually can say extract identity, and it'll actually, oh, no, it, oh, no, it's extract, but right, there it is. Extract model. Extract model is a function that just, that uh, extracts the uh, model from what we're working with. And then if I, if I do control this, and I say control equals control, control resamples, Oh, no, wait, that's wrong. I did it wrong. It was control equals. I named it wrong. There we go. Check this out. That extracts list actually contains the R part objects. Uh, as a, um, so if I said, like, take a look at DT extracts one, uh, and then, uh, ooh, let's see, and then I need to actually grab out of that one. This is the tree. Uh, this would be, so this is if I want to, like, look at one, look at one decision tree. So what this would do is say, okay, if your build length is short, go with Adelie. If it's long, uh, then 
Yeah, I see. If it's long, then it keeps going into build depth, then back to length. So that what's interesting is the decision tree ended up choosing just based on length and depth. Now, we could keep fitting types of models. For instance, when a, deci a decision tree probably isn't, isn't uh, going to get great, might not get the best performance out of this, but the, um, and actually, but I'll note that, we can, that, that there's a very interpretable understanding of this decision tree, which is that if we compare Adelie to other, uh, we can get this, uh, uh, we can get, here it is. We can basically just use build length and build depth and get that, and it, by the way, body mass is not helpful. So that was us looking at our, um, yeah, that was us looking at, at creating an accurate measure for Adelaide versus everything else. Last thing we want to do, I really want to do multi-class multi regression. Uh, and uh, I, I, realized, I realized at the time I hadn't um, had the chance to do that. I'm going to keep control up here. I might want other control. Uh, I'm going to do one kind of multi-class multi regression. So, and we'll do multi-gnome regression. Uh, on, um, and uh, we'll be doing the same kind of model we do other places. But we'll say, I'm going to, let's see, evaluate nearest neighbor. I shouldn't call it NN. That sounds like neural network. I'm going to go with KNN. Um, hold on. I'm going to go with evaluate nearest neighbor. And then we're going to do one more thing, one last thing. And that's uh, multi-gnome regression. Multi-gnome regression. Uh, oh yeah, I've got the code up here. Fit resamples on our splits. Set engine. Interesting that you always have to set an engine explicitly. I really thought there would just be a, um, a default. And uh, yeah, I'll use uh, glmnet. glmnet is regularized regression. Hmm, yeah, let's try that out. Uh, Multi-class. Heh, <laughs> that doesn't look good. That looks not, that looks not good at all. Uh, what are our, all models failed? Multi-class. Notes. One. Notes. Error. N A and um, non number in foreign function call. Oh, there's missing data. Uh, okay, so it sounds like LM handled the missing data well. This one didn't. Uh, so the thing we can do for that is uh, let's check who has missing data. Uh, summarize all mean is N A dot. Bill length, build it. All four of them have some missing data, but I bet you if we filter one of them, we get all of them. Not is NA bill length mm. Here we go. That will fix it. Uh, I'm gonna actually just do not is NA bill length mm. I'm gonna do it at this at this stage just so we can um. And I'm also gonna call it split multi class. The other thing I'm gonna do is do this where I'm not doing where I'm just turning this into a factor. Nothing else. Uh, we have multi class regression. Here we go. This is um, still a split. We removed two cases. Uh, it sounds like the other one's handled better. And I do multi-class regression, multi-class split, multi-class. Uh, yes. There was a good. There was a question, which is: Are there observations that are missing? Uh, okay. That's, do I want to impute sex? Well, I'm not actually using sex today because my assumption is sex doesn't differ between species, at least in its. Uh, in the wild, we, we wouldn't expect it to. Um, but the, uh, here we go. Oh, uh, split multi-class. Oh. Splits multi-class. Split, here we go. I'm gonna move this all down. I, the issue that I run into is splits, is split multi-class, oh, uh, Training split multi class v fold cv ten. Yep, that worked. Uh, I think uh, here and then here, and then splits multi class. 
Uh huh. Penalty. You need a penalty. Hmm. Non negative number it was in the total amount of, of regularization. I would like to be able to tune this, but I'm not gonna do it I'm not gonna do tuning today. It's too close to the end. I'm going to say penalty is 0.5. Wait. Curious models L1 and L2, depending on the actually never mind, I don't I'm gonna say the penalty is zero. I'm gonna drop regularization because we have only four terms. Uh, later we want to use tuning on this um, parameter, uh, but I'm not doing that yet. And now I can say multi-class collect metrics. Where we see, all right, even in multi-class regression, um, this is actually something really great, is they figured out, this is so cool, honestly, uh, tiny models when it works is really quite impressive. Uh, it figured out the accuracy is 98.8%, uh, the kappa is 98.1%, ROCAUC, uh, the R, the um, hand kill, which I think is a multi-class variation on AUC, is also is 100%. So our AUC here is really good. How can we, um, yeah, how can we, uh, like, uh, confirm, how, not confirm it, but like, uh, get a sense of what that, what that would mean? Well, if in my control, I control the samples. If in my control, I save the predictions, I actually can keep my cross-validated predictions here. I'm going to say control uh, save pred equals true. One more time, multi-class regression. In answer to a question, we do have missing sex uh, data, but I'm actually not using sex as a predictor in this data set. Uh, I'm just using the the, the um, lengths, the build and such. Notice I now have a column called predictions. Watch this. On nest dot predictions, fingers crossed, there it goes. We now have the predictions of Pred Adelie and everything else uh, out of sample predictions for each of these classes. And I can take them and I can say, let's compare Pred Adelie uh, on um, species with a box plot. And notice that it has 100% uh, AUC at separating Adelie from both the other two species. I don't have to stop there. I can pivot lo uh, longer. All three of the starts with, nope, I don't want to do that. I want to do it pivot longer on Pred Adelie, Pred Chinstrap, Pred Genchu. The calls uh, are these, and I say names to uh, names to predicted class. The class value equals uh, value to prob. Please go in quotes. So now I actually get species and predicted class. Why am I doing this? Because now I can take the same thing, facet wrap by the predicted class, and put prob on the y-axis. Ah, check that out. All right, what is this? This is the predict. This is uh, the predictions for all three values. Um, actually, I'm going to do it even better. This is. I'm going to flip these two. I'm going to put predicted class and species on the on the y-axis. So now I'm fascinated by what the actual species is. I can see the probability. All right, so the story here is that um, for Adelie, uh, for Adelie, Adelie, we see like uh, almost all, basically all the Adelie were successfully classified. Actually, it looks like all of them were. Uh, Chinstrap, uh, Gentu were entirely correctly classified. Chinstrap, there were, looks like there's probably one that accidentally looked like Adelie, um, Adelie because notice it, it had the highest probability here, and one uh, this would be, yeah, lower than 50% chin strap. Yeah, but it could still, uh, I'm not 100% sure how they end up, but it looks like they got, they got at least one wrong. Uh, this multi-class uh, prediction. But yeah, that's a, that is pretty, a pretty strong model. So nearest neighbor is able to do really well on identifying species. This is, like, so, what do we do today? So much. First, we started by, with my internet being broken. 
Then we did a little bit of exploratory analysis, which is always a really good thing, especially because it showed me what I wanted to work on today, which is using these three values, which, do have, which have differences, but also some overlap, to create a predictive model to predict a penguin's um, uh, species based on these factors. So I, once I realized I wanted to do that, I went through a couple steps with tidy models, and you start to see how I learned how to do some things that I haven't used in a couple of months, haven't used all that much at all, uh, to do logistic um, regression, to do nearest neighbor, and a decision tree, and then to compare those four models. I found a few things that, I, that, that worked well along the way and I was able to use easily. I found a few things where I might, might have been interested in, um, in the flow being maybe a little bit more, more, more natural, but maybe I, I also have a lot I need to learn. Uh, so this is cross-valid um, accuracy metrics across models. And the um, and finally, we trained the nearest neighbor model uh, and got some of its accuracy on the holdout set. Uh, and we were able to see that it had um, it did have 100% AUC on that data. And then finally, we did multinomial regression uh, classification. Um, and uh, if we had a little more time, we would have done some other things with, panel, with tuning penalty parameters, things like that. All right. Well, that was um, that was a really fun tour of tidy models. Uh, I really appreciate your patience starting late in the internet, uh, being a little bit funky today. Um, but this, I learned really a lot from this about about how uh, tidy models works and how we can use our own example data set. I hope you saw learned a little about tidy models and maybe also about how to go about using software, uh, you, learning to use a package you haven't used before. All right. Uh, that's everything for today. I hope you had fun. I, uh, I certainly did. If you enjoyed the screencast, please do subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next week.